This house comes with free tax support. Free tax support. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This oh, is very important God. because of what he says. Very important. Oh, these it are is. these are like very trendy, and um, a lot of people have them in their home. But what they don't realize is that water coming from the attic, as you're describing, is really hot. It's and really so you turn it on, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but you burn yourself. <laughs> oh. Real estate. We know she's lovely, we know she's special, and she is going to be the primary hostess for this little talk about this property that is now, at the time of you listening to this, for sale. You could actually buy this house, so listen up. Katrina, take it away. Okay, Paul, I watched the walkthrough video that Steve put together, and it was fascinating to listen to all the marvelous things that you have done to this house. There's one thing that stuck out to me that I want to get right out in the open. To know this house, it's really important to know the man who made this house, what it is today. And the only way we can do that is to go back to your father. One of the fascinating quotes that stuck out to me, no one has time to do it right, but everyone has time to do it over. And that is the quote. That is true. That is exactly the way he would say it multiple times a day sometimes. Um, and so, so tell me how that has influenced the things that you have decided to do to this house. I learned from him that the only right way to do something is the right way the first time. That's right. I think that's beautiful. And, and, your, and your house showcases that. You can walk in this right up to the front door and you can tell before you even enter the house that everything that you have done has been thoughtful, has been done to the very best of your ability and materials that you could purchase. And, you know, that stands out head and shoulders above the crowd. And anyone would be proud to buy this house. And I think you would be very proud in selling it because you knew you left something behind that was quality. And I think in today's world, that's very important. And the soapstone sink with the riser ledge with the easy access plumbing so you can go from the top side instead of underneath. That was genius. I think it offsets beautifully that faucet, which is the jewelry piece of the kitchen. And it, isn't that a Brizo? Is yes, that correct? it is a Brizo. And I know those are quite costly. And uh, it's a nice little piece of artwork, a nice little attribute to the stone, you know, the soapstone countertops, which I think are just stunning. And I don't see them in many homes, but I do love them. But I'm from the north. That's right. Well, most yes. people, so. you know, that love them or even know about them still don't want to pay for them. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> there is that. Uh, and I had these custom made, custom cut in New Jersey and then um, shipped down here and then I did the installation. And uh, that's another story that would take too long for okay. this venue. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. af after I got them in, because it was a, a Formica countertop before, um, and after I got them in, I didn't think much about it, but the kitchen cabinetry, which had been put in, I think in like 2015, um, I thought they were white, but they weren't. They were biscuit. And so the, t the light, not white color looked terrible, terrible. Mm. So I... Um, had some friends by chance who I had met uh, a few years ago, and these two gals um, custom paint the cabinetry. And I had them come middle of November, just past, and they took the doors and the drawer fronts home to their shop, and they did the rest in place. They even wet sanded between coats, just like a car. And, and then when they brought the doors and put everything back together, they wouldn't even let me come in the house until it was done. Until it was finished? Well, yes. I have to say, they look like they're factory finished. They look sleek and like brand new cabinetry. You would never know that they were made over, and that's a sign of excellent workmanship. You have a very good eye for detail, and you know quality. And so that says quality, long-lasting durability, loveliness, functional beauty, that's what it is. And I know my limits. Oh, you know your limits? I know what I cannot do <laughs> yeah. and would not try to It's do. nice that you didn't try to paint those yourself. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> yes. And I will not go bid looking for low bid. I will looking for best quality. So and like just like with your roof. 
Yeah, was it tell your roof? You your said roof. you got three quotes, but you took the highest? That's correct. Okay, yeah, so tell and, us how you went through and that. It was, because of, it was not because of the price, it was because of the person and the company. And the same with, uh, uh, with all of the uh, pavers and the driveway and... Um, I, I looked and found who was going to do the job right and satisfactory for me. And I, that's, so when I do hire, I know I'm hiring somebody that I can trust to do it right. The first and, time. And the first time. <laughs> and I, I usually hang around and go on the roof while they're tearing off the oh, old they roof. They love you. And, <laughs> and I warned them about that. I'm, uh, I'm only 77, so I got a lot of years left of uh, climbing ladders. Yes, you do. I'm, I'm halfway there. And you know, that beautiful pavered entryway that you had just mentioned uh, leads me to the beautiful artwork that you had commissioned for your piazza. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. The Why did you tell me about that? And is it staying? Uh, yeah. I, I believe it is. For, it's yeah. It, I believe it, it is for the right price. Th it will be included. Yes. Yeah, okay. I do have a buyer. If not. If not. Great. Well, and I'll tell that, you. And that buyer is uh, about three blocks away. <laughs> and they're hoping. <laughs> Just hoping. <laughs> it was the last, I guess, uh, art festival thing downtown Venice at the beginning of COVID. I knew I wanted to put something somewhere, but I didn't know what or where. Uh, and I just happened to run across this man from Michigan, and uh, he didn't have anything out that I liked, and so I, I sort of told him what I liked, and he had this sailboat that uh, moved in the wind, and all stainless steel, and he had sold it. He had it promised to someone else in Venice who uh, a year later when he brought it back the guy didn't show up I happened to be there on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock and he said well let me show you this he says I just I've been texting him all weekend and and uh, he just has never gotten here so if you want it it was the piece I dreamed about never thought I would find anything like it love it when a plan comes together well and, you can thank Mr. Steve and, Anderson for yes. uh, that beautiful piece well, of and it's, it's the centerpiece of your piazza, is it not? Yes, yeah. but the other two pieces were also made by him. And he's sort of semi-retired, not doing it anymore. But uh, he did for me, and his sons also are I, I want to I want to point something out. He's not doing them anymore. So, folks, you're going to want this... <laughs> these pieces of art to come with this uh, house. And Mr. Anderson, if don't you're think listening... You, don't think you I've could just his, let them go and I've got find his, something else. I've got his card. Got so we can we can call him or... Maybe we can call but, him out of retirement. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. maybe. So I, anyway, the, this last piece, I sort of drew up my rendition of what, what I was thinking, but it was going to be like 11 feet long. And I asked him if he could carve it make it and then cut it in three pieces so I could assemble it. And he got it finished, sent me pictures, said, he said, I cannot cut this. He said, it has got to stay as one piece. It is not gonna go together right. It is not gonna look right. He says, how about if I drop it off? <laughs> you know, people will do anything to come to Florida for a vacation, won't well, they? <laughs> and, and he and his wife did, and the three of us hung it on the wall before he took off in his motorhome. So not only did he build it, he delivered it, and he installed it. <laughs> I mean, right. really. The long chute of water straight down that uh, about a quarter mile, that is due west, exactly due west. Okay. And, we, and that is where the sun will set. Uh, then as the days get longer, it goes to the right of that. And right now it's, uh, it's over a couple of houses over there. And then as the days get shorter, it'll go back to the equinox, and then it'll continue on to the left. And this is definitely one of the best water views for a backyard in the area. I it think looks so. as if, it, 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 if I can interject here for Please. a second, it looks I'm sitting here at the kitchen table looking out these 20-foot you know, sliders. glass bank of <laughs> sliders here, and it it gives you the sense that you are actually like it's got like a waterfall edge, like those 
beautiful swimming pools where it just goes yes. off into yeah. Infinity. Yeah, the infinity. And that's that's the look you have sitting here. You believe the house is actually on the water like a houseboat. That's what it looks like. That's how I can describe it. And it's really quite lovely. And, and it is. But one of the questions that you know we're asked a lot these days, which we had not previously had these questions, uh, is how did the property handle the hurricane? So we... We need you to tell the listeners, well, first of all, were you here for Ian? I was not here for Ian. Okay, so was, what can you tell potential buyers? But he buyers? was here for Irma. Well, was yes, but, but I was Ian not. is the Oh, he wasn't. <laughs> no. I was wrong. I, I'm adding I had, stuff. I'm making stuff up. <laughs> but Ian is the one that people are concerned about. They don't want to buy a house that, you know, uh, has hidden storm damage and whatnot. So why don't you talk a little bit about how this property, you know, fared? Well, it, it fared very well. I had a couple of screens that got torn and trees were damaged uh, and had to be removed. But uh, the building withstood everything. And I got a, I got a, f uh, a text with a photograph from a neighbor across the lake who's a friend of mine. And uh, that's when I, he wanted me to see the tree down. That's when I saw some shingles missing, just a few. And I thought, uh-oh, I got roof damage. Well, it was very minor. I'm having the new roof put on as we speak, or the old one taken off, and a standing seam metal roof that's going to last for 50 years, not 10. And uh, I believe, again, doing it right. This house and the houses along this street were built in 1975 and 76. But I think that the structure of them, and I grew up around home construction, so I, I could see a lot of it in the attic and how this one was put together. And I really do believe that these houses are better construction than a lot of new ones. How many people have tried to talk you out of putting that expensive of a roof on a house you're selling? A lot of neighbors have told me I'm it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> okay. well, to spend that kind of money. And again, to know the house, you need to know the man. We also have the spray insulation known as isonine. Correct. And some people, some people know what that is and other people do not want it. You just take a second and explain to me why you had that done. What was the benefit of that? Well, I guess I'd have to say that a lot of people don't know anything about it, including me. Oh, before I <laughs> maybe did we it. don't want you to say. Before I did it, he knows now. We, yes, um, and the and the the way that I learned about it because a lot of the new construction down here in this part of the country is having an isonine, which is an open cell foam that's sprayed against the rafter system. It, it helps hold the house together. Besides the fact that you're your attic is going to be the temperature of your house rather than 130 or 40 degrees. Every house down my street, because your plumbing is in the attic, you turn the cold water on and it's too hot to take a shower. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to interject something right there. So we have these uh, new fabulous bidet-style toilet seats. <laughs> Okay, folks, yeah. I can't yeah. believe she's going there. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This oh, is very important God. because of what he said is very important. Oh, these are is. These are like very trendy, and, and yeah. a lot of people have them in their home, but what they don't realize is that water coming from the attic, as you're describing, is really hot. It's and really, so you turn it on, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but you've burned yourself. <laughs> I, hadn't, uh, I haven't had that experience. <laughs> yeah, we have to put a little sign up that says, caution, yeah. toilet seat wow. water is hot. Yeah. <laughs> So well, anyway, but go well, on. Well, so with, with the isonine sprayed against the rafter system, uh, in, this, in this house, the water is in the attic, the air handler's in the attic, the ductwork is in the attic, the flexible ductwork uh, has like one inch of uh, insulation around the, around the duct that the air's going through. So with a, uh, an attic that's 130, 40 degrees during the day because your insulation is under it, it's the bat insulation or blow-in insulation on the floor of the attic. The attic is miserably hot. 
I ended up putting all new duct work in also in the attic. Oh. Okay, I don't know if Callie's coming through the mics or not, okay? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you are hearing the grunts of a dog, that would be... It is a dog, it's not a pig. It almost sounds like a little not, piggy, but it's a dog. A pig. That's because she expects something to eat. Now, oh. she wants some treats. Oh, she want, I, I didn't come with it. <laughs> so sorry, Callie. So sorry. Uh, so, so the uh, insulation uh, now is the air handler doesn't have to work against 130 degree air. The duct work is pumping air to the first floor through an attic that's now um, 75 or 80 degrees rather than 130, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what kind of and electric that, bills are you looking at? I was been just been watching it now because I'm down here and it is summer and uh, it has gotten up and I know the prices have gone up. So I also have in my electric bill a um, surge protector that's part of the ele electric company. So I'm paying 15 bucks a month for a surge protector that they cover, okay. including the surge protector. I think this last month was 140. Yeah, most of the electric bills that I'm seeing are over 200. You know, yeah, and I mean, that's... And I'm sorry, mine are much more than that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> ours are in the 400 range. Oh, wow. You're seeing a huge savings there. My neighbor thought I was nuts there, too. <laughs> well, it's paying for itself. Can I segue us to the fabulous classic bathrooms? Oh, oh yeah. I'm so glad they're classic. I have a lot of customers who look for those classic details. And anytime you can find them in excellent condition, that's like a bonus. I... In this neighborhood and in one other neighborhood in Venice, I can always count on finding some beautiful gems of mid-century bathroom tile work and, you know, with the little tiny multicolored square pieces on the floor. And there's something so charming about it. Yours is original and in really excellent condition. Yes, thank you. The, You're welcome. Um, you took good yes, care of it. The, sh the shower, <clears throat> the shower in, in the main bedroom is... Uh, the original tile. Um, I've tried to find matching tile because there were a couple of them cracked. It was clear at the ceiling, so it didn't bother anything. But um, I couldn't find the exact same color, and uh, it's sort of a robin blue, robin egg blue. And uh, so I ended up finding some that looked like maybe it was the same color and got these. <laughs> I've got like 24 tile or something from that are brand new, made by the same company uh, in the 70s from Canada. I, I, <laughs> I had found them on eBay <laughs> yeah. in Canada, and I got them, and they are the wrong color blue. But looking at the floor, which is the little one-inch tile, and it's got two colors of blue and white, and the blue that I got now could I was going to use as a... Uh, patch um, in and you yeah. could do a design you could put your initials you could do random you want. Or, complimentary it would be a tiles random, would yeah. be yeah. yes and it would superb. replace the ones that were cracked and again i knew my limits i have a, a very very good tile guy in indianapolis who i was gonna have him come down and do them for me and he was looking forward to it but we didn't so but we may just leave that for the next home. Right, I think it's you gotta, charming. You gotta leave Listen, something for them. It's charming. You know? I'm glad you didn't touch it. The Chinese details of the the moldings, the way that they're done without the mitered corners, to me was genius. I was in a uh, really nice hotel in Shenyang, uh, China. When you drive up and see the 1731 on the front of the house. Oh yeah, that's stunning. I have a picture of my room number in the hotel in Shenyang, China, which all the room numbers were done the same, that way. I, I'd never seen that before. I took pictures. That was when I decided to do the front door <laughs> that way. I'm looking out here, I see docks on some of these properties. Could you put a dock out here? Have you ever looked into that? Uh, yes, you just have to have permission from the HOA. From the HOA, yes. okay. And they. They'll want a, a drawing and a layout, and uh, which we have to do. I had to do that for the roof. Okay. I had to do that for the landscaping that I did out front. What about the color of the house and the brickwork? If the, 
the color of the house, if you stay with the same color, you don't have to get permission. If you change color, which I did, because this house was yellow. It was yellow on the outside. It was yellow on the inside. Every single room was yellow. It and had the cabinets were biscuit. shades of yellow. <laughs> so, um, and the HOA is pretty pretty good to work with. And, and with paints uh, specifically, they had all of the paints that Sherwin-Williams has uh, for different house combinations. And they have some blocked out that you can't use because of the darkness of the paint and it fades too much. So, so it's I was, not that they're being mean. They're trying to be keep the neighborhood they, beautiful. Correct. The things that they want are, are an attractive neighborhood. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it the, is. It's reasonable. Yes. There are no, there you can't have a boat on a trailer parked in the side yard. Very nice. You okay. can't have a, a commercial pickup with, with logos and names and you can if it's parked in the garage yes in the garage yeah. but you can't have it parked on the driveway okay. and as far as uh, boats go like you know out here i'm guessing no motors yes you can have motors you can have you motors can have electric here. motors oh, wow. i don't know if a tesla motor would qualify <laughs> okay <laughs> hadn't thought of that but okay. most of the most of the boats well i guess probably all the boats are a small pontoon boat with like um four passenger, six passenger. It's about the size of my table. Okay. Um, and they're really cute. And, the, and in the wintertime, just before Christmas, we always have a, uh, a boat parade. Oh, cute. Of, Your own nice. little boat parade of just the house Of just those who are on the lake oh, because there are, no, there are no ways in or out of the lake. So right. it's the people who live on the lake. Yeah, I see quite a few mm. kayaks around here. I'm guessing people probably fish out there and whatnot. Yes, yeah. Uh, we see a canoe once in a while, but almost all of it, it are these little pontoon boats. And they go out in the evening, and they go... Uh, this lake has several... It's named Claw Lake, and therefore it's got several claws. It's, it's not just a straightaway. So you can boat different directions. I never have, but I've always kind of longed to wave somebody down when they go by at sunset. Bertazzoni Italian. 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 It really is yes. beautiful. Yes, it's. I've Just, got two uh, of them. <laughs> there, I, I only have, see one. I have two. I have the oh, second one in, in Indianapolis. Okay. Well, when you it's, continue to buy the same brand over and over, that you know should it's, say something. I I love induction. Oh. I'm trying to put together uh, an operations manual oh, for sweet. my house. If I don't <laughs> tell you how to work it, you're going to wonder how do you do this. It's, okay. it's, it's all straightforward, but it's Maybe just we should just do a quick little video of instructing the new an homeowner. Video. Yeah, like yeah, that might can, be good. I intend on being available, Aww. really. Uh, after, after the house is no longer mine, Isn't I'm going to nice? miss it, but I, am, I do know the house inside and out. And uh, so you're saying a, you're going to offer support for somebody yeah. who might need oh, to call definitely. you. Yes. Great. I've already, this house comes with free tech support. <laughs> free tech support. Actually, <laughs> actually, the actually the Brizo faucet is warranted for the owner, original owner of the house. Well, I just put it in in um, uh, November or December. So it hasn't even been in six months and it's a, a lifetime warranty. So. Wow. I, all I need to do is get a phone call. I want to be able to help. Real quick here, we've got hurricane protection. We've got the we've got Jansen who has come out and given you the really nice roll down armor screens. Yes, you have the accordions. You yes. have you have a lot of really uh, nice additional things here to protect the house not only just with the roof and the insulation but you've got the hurricane protection and those and those roll down screens are they remote yes oh great even better and there's a backup handle that i will identify okay that you can put in and hand roll if, down. Yeah, if the power's out Perfect. and you need to roll them up or down okay wonderful uh the house has been replumbed uh you've got uh, your cast iron pipes have been lined really this is quite a house yeah, the way I've been putting it to to friends and neighbors and people who I, I know, I, what I say is that there is not a single thing left that must be done to this house or would even be a good thing to do. It's paint. If you don't like the paint, you color the paint. But everything else, there's quite a few things still under warranty. The water heater and 
Um, what about that washer and dryer that's unvented? The washer and oh yeah, my washer and dryer. I, when I visited my f son and family in the Netherlands, um, just before I bought this house, and uh, of course there the washer, the dryers are none of them are vented outside. The American way of having a hole in the wall and venting and blowing all the cold, hot air out your out your vent and then having having a crud that fills up the thing and you can't and it doesn't work anymore because you got too much dust lint, and dirt yeah. and lint. And uh, so when I decided to buy a new washer dryer here, because I didn't like the <laughs> ones, same with the refrigerator, I didn't like the one that was brand new here under warranty, so I replaced the it with one that, that I liked. The when you bought it. That's correct, right. yeah. Um, so the uh, I bought Bosch washer dryer and the dryer is, has a heat exchanger that you clean, and it's very, very simple. I can teach you how to do it. It takes very little time, but it's got a heat exchanger, so the heat from the dryer is recirculated in to uh, reuse and dry your clothes. Nothing is going out. The heat exchanger makes water from the condensate and then it's pumped down the drain with the washing machine genius. in the same hole That's and it's genius. it and I plugged up the hole that goes outside it's still there it could be used but you never I, have to have your dryer vent cleaned I intend that's cr true <laughs> I the intend fire hazard is gone <laughs> yes I I think that the, the washer and dryer are so uh, the right thing for this property I intend at this point to uh, leave the washer dryer. I think we still even have six months of warranty on the washer dryer. Too. Last couple things in my mind, I've been kind of holding my, my uh, thoughts here. Uh, one, there are a certain amount of buyers out there who would love this, but only if there's a way to put a pool on. Some people really want to have a pool. So uh, as far as, you know, you've got some space to the left of the house, that looks like that might be possible. Uh, have you ever had anybody out to have that conversation, like an actual pool company or survey or anything like that? There's a little flexibility in the way that you can do it here. The original, I'll call it the lanai, um, the original piece is under the house um, roof and is, is 10 feet away from the house structure. The people b who I purchased the house from added an additional 10 feet. So sort of the base basis is that you've got only 10 feet to get to the end of the lanai cage, and then you have about 20 feet to the water. And uh, as I looked at the rules, Saras I think Sarasota County, it might have been HOA, I don't remember now, uh, if you had no pool cage, you could go closer to the water. If you had like a fence and had and had a instead of the screened in area. And interestingly, when I have been visiting a friend of mine in Delray Beach on the Atlantic side in million and a half dollar properties, sort of as a minimum, there isn't a pool cage in that entire, community we hate them we take them off every yeah, house we, we buy we, we uh, own two houses with pools and neither has neither a cage. Have really a cage. Yeah. okay well that's that's an important thing i think and and now with insurance companies not wanting to cover pool cages yeah um it's like let's do what you really want to do and then look at different options if you want a pool because i think there are some good options for having water without having to spend a hundred thousand dollars to put it in the ground and and yeah. have have something you can swim against a current that's oh they have those in. yes i priced uh, them out once yeah, yeah. uh so i uh it, it is possible and there are a couple of areas that um if you look with some ideas in your head and then take some time i think you could find a way of doing something that you mm -hmm. wanted um on this property. What was the okay. other question? Uh, so on the roof, uh, hurricane damage and all that, that topic, okay, we never 
said in this podcast that there was no actual roof damage that caused water to come into the property. Because I, I didn't ask that question specifically. That's one of the things people want to know. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, I was in Minnesota at the time. I have a cousin who lives here in Venice. He had um, weathered the storm over on the Atlantic side. And uh, when I got this photo from my neighbor across the lake that I had some shingles gone, uh, I knew that the best thing we could start with would, would be some uh, roof cement. And uh, so I contacted my cousin and said, hey, uh, can you stop at uh, Home Depot over there because there isn't going to be any roof cement over here. So he came back the next day. He went up on the roof with the five gallons of roof cement, used about two. And, uh, and there were no, there were no, nowhere on the roof was anything going through. Okay. It was only... It was only the top layer of shingle that was missing here and there, and he just uh, went around uh, each of them and goobered them up. Yeah, and no flooding came up <laughs> into the house or into the garage. None. Okay. This no. There's uh, the water. Those are just the questions I get asked. No. Yeah. No. The, the water did come up on the lake because of Alligator Creek being where the water goes, and Alligator Creek came up higher than the lake and so it started backing up into the lake but it was still um, several feet below the level of of my house and okay, so with all know. of the water and all of the rain this house was built right 50 40 some years ago it was built right and i and i'm keeping it that way almost but, 50 years ago yeah almost 50 yeah 1975 mm -hmm. it was the first one built on this street, I've got, I've got an aerial view of sort of the way everything looks now. But I also have an aerial view that a neighbor of, uh, at the other end of the block, who he his dad bought a, a lot on this street. His dad and mom are passed, but he now has this house down at the other end, and he sh gave me a copy of a photograph that was taken from an airplane, and it shows this house being built and one other house uh, three doors away from me on the end of our cul-de-sac being built and nothing else being built on this street. And uh, I think it was, a, I think this lot was chosen by someone uh, who, who had to do with this uh, yeah. area. Why wouldn't I, you pick this as this, the best lot? Yeah, I've, here. I have, uh, <laughs> I have walked a lot of properties for myself and with people and just getting the right lot with the right view. Very important. <laughs> so why don't you yes. tell me just about how you um, went about hanging that canoe on the ceiling? Oh. <laughs> well, the canoe was uh, something I was going to build and I had not yet gotten to it. And when I saw it on next door for sale, I went and bought it that day. Um, I brought it back home and it sat on a couple sawhorses in the, in the living room for about a month before I decided what I was gonna do. So we, we sort of kicked it around a little bit and then we went out and bought the materials and we hung it uh, on, the, on the ceiling, which really was very nice because it's an eight foot ceiling and, and even Steve didn't hit his head walking under it. Yeah, I hit my head, my head on ceiling fans in some of these houses, but I'm not coming close to that canoe. It's so. the first thing it's I working. measured or gauged when I came in. I walked underneath it and I evaluated who is going to find this canoe annoying because they're going to hit their head on it every time well, they walk through the room. But I didn't, I didn't ascertain it was going to be an issue. It's, it's very tight to the ceiling. It's beautiful to look at and very unusual. Never seen anything like it. And is it staying? I have a place uh, along a little canoeing stream in southeast Minnesota. And uh, that is where uh, I and the canoe plan to go. Okay. okay. So now when you remove this from the wall, it will look as if it was never there. That's correct. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, there that's are four great. holes that I'll <laughs> fill and, and take care of. Now, it's interesting that after I got the canoe up, 
the, uh, the man that I hired it from, who was just in my house yesterday too, so this goes back to January of 2020, and uh, I called him to tell him to ask him to come over and see how I how I hung it. He went home. And did he hang it from the ceiling? <laughs> yes. Well, I, so, so he's still local, right? So if whoever buys this house as they're walking through or looking at the picture, or whatever, it's like, man, that's cool. I wish he'd leave that. You may not be leaving that one, but they could have one possibly built by the same. So you're person telling me there's two yours. houses here in the Venice, Florida area. That have boats from the ceiling? That's correct. <laughs> okay, folks, listen up. This is a coming trend. Well, I like how ready for a flood you are. Yes, that's well, perfect. Yeah, yeah no. that's been... And it's it's interesting, too, that with the view of the of the lake behind us and uh, the 20 feet of doorways with glass, uh, I've had a, a number of people come in and not even see the canoe. Yeah, well, you walk they in walk. and well, that just amazing Well, that just view. means the view is stunning. Yeah. It draws you draws your eye right through and out to the back and that is a true statement yeah all right great well we've just broken an hour great. Um, really yes we got a conversation squ- we gotta squiddle all that down to like 30 minutes yeah so but thank you paul i appreciate you you know sharing this information thank with you. us and certainly you know with with all the listeners to the real estate agent man podcast uh and then you know specifically this will be available for anybody who's interested in the property you know once it goes on online on the market uh, and they'll have the opportunity to hear directly from you about what you've done with this amazing house thank you okay good thank you all right all right bye Yeah.